What's Gucci, everybody? It's AJ here again, and today I want to talk about pro the product of sums and sum of products. Now, we've seen equations in Boolean algebra, but what if, and we've seen truth tables. Now, what if, what happens if you have a huge truth table and you want to express that in one big equation? Well, one way to do that is either use the product of sums or the sum of products, and I'll show you why they're called that at the end of this tutorial. But for my first, but my first example, I'm going to show you how to do the product of sums. With the product of sums, what we want to do is we want to look at is we have a truth table here, and we have the output, which is f. So it's telling us if the output is false or true. And what for product of sums, what we do is we want to look at every true output. And once, once we see every true output, we look at the variables, so x, y, and z. And what we want to do is that we want to look at x, y, and z, and we want to and them together. But we want to and them together, or multiply them together, so that all the values are 1 for that, for that uh, row. So for instance, for this first row right here, which I'm going to star, I've got, I'm going to have x bar, because I want it to be 1, so I negate it, and then I have times y bar, and I'm going to negate it, and then I'm going to just have z, because z is already 1. And now, uh, and now I'm going to add what I just found for that first row, which has a 1, only has a 1. I'm not doing the first, the very first row with the zeros because it has an output of 0. What I'm going to do for the third row with 0, 1, 0, 1, I'm going to add it to what I just got. So it's I'm taking the sums, I'm going to take the sums of all the products. And that is why this is called the sum of products. I may have misset it earlier where I said it was product of sums. The product of sums I'm going to get to later. So this is the sum of products. And so what I want to do again is I want to do, I want to look at this row. I want to look at this row now, which is x bar, y, and z bar. So x bar times y times z bar. And I'm going to add it to the next row, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, which is going to be x times y bar times z bar, plus the next row, which you should see is x times y times z. Now that is how we do product of sum. So we can say that is our equation. That equals f of x or our truth table, truth table equation. So this equation represents how this truth table is formatted and will return true based upon those, based upon those, um, you know, um, those truth values. Because if one of these is true, then it's oring it with everything else. And if you have one true and you or it with anything else, then it will automatically be true. Go away, stupid screen. And so there you go. That is how to do the product of the sum of products. But now we're going to do the product of sums, which is a little bit different. So we're going to do the product of sums. The product of sums is a little bit more difficult, but you'll see what it does. So I'm going to get rid of this example, and I'm going to change around the example I just showed you. So instead of um, zeros mostly um, ones, I'm going to do mostly zeros for this application because what I want to do instead of looking at the ones and then doing the complement and then doing what I showed you with the and principle, I want to look at the zeros for the product of sums. The best way to um, know the difference is just remember that when you look at the zeros, you're looking for the product. It's, it starts with product. I don't know. I don't. I didn't think of any good analogy to really be able to think about it. But for product of sums, you want to look at the zeros first, and then then you want to do you want to do the same little algorithm where you take you take the complement of it of the value of its zero, and then you multiply it by the other values. So for instance, I'm going to do this for the second row here because I don't do the first row because that's equal to one. I'm only looking for the zeros in the product of sums. So I do that. So what I do is I have x bar. And I multiply it just like in the sum of products times y bar times z. And now I'm simply going to add it to all of these again. So I'm going to get a very similar answer. Actually, I'm going to get the exact same answer. But at the end, at the end, I will complement everything. And I will show you that. And then I will change the form based on that. So basically what I do now is so I complement that and I'm going to add that together. So again, I do x bar 
times y times um, z bar plus the third row which is going to be x times y bar times z bar plus x times y times z and that is our equation but now what we're going to do here let me make these a little bit nicer I'm going to take the complement of everything so I'm going to put a bar all over this and then I'm going to reformat it so the first thing I like to do when I have a bar is remember that if you bar a symbol, a multiplication symbol, an add symbol, you are you are reversing that symbol from either the opposite. You're switching between um, chain, um, plus, which is an or, or a multiplication, which is an and. So I'm now I'm going to rewrite this equation where it's um, x bar times y bar times z, and then that's all complemented. But this is a or. That's a that is a um, multiplication. And I'm going to have um, x bar times y times z and again I'm going to carry over still carry over the complement but now this is going to be a multiplication and then now I'm going to have a x times y bar times z bar and still have the multiplication and then I have this and then I'm going to have x times y times z and still I need that location bar. So now I'm going to break it down a little bit more. So what I can do is still again I have these symbols that I want to do. So what I'm going to do here since I have the equation I'm going to get rid of this table to create some more space. So we don't forget about it. And now what I can do is I can go over here and I see that I'm looking over here. I'm looking at the, I'm going to take it parentheses each time. So how I want to do this is I want to make both those multiplications pluses and I want to reverse the signs of the double negative. So the double negative of x is x, and then the double negative y is y, and then the negative of z is z bar. So I have that. And now I'm going to, and so I know that is one answer. And I'm going to do that for each of these. So again, I do the same thing where the double negative x is x, and then I'm going to add it because I'm taking the negative of the multiplication. And now I've got y bar because I'm the negative of that, and I've got another plus the double negative z which is z. Now I go down again. I've got times x bar complement plus y because it's a double negative plus z. And another parentheses. And again we have another multiplication. And so then I do the last one which is going to be simply x plus y plus z. Except I have to bar all, each of those separately. And there you go. That is the product of sums. So the key thing to remember, obviously, is that the product of sums, you complement it at the end, as well as look for the zeros. So I like to think of it that way. In product of sums, you can kind of write it like that. You take the zeros, and then you complement it at the end, but you do the same algorithm. And with the sums, sum of, the sum of products, you look for the ones, and you do the, you do the simplest algorithm, so you don't take the complement. So that's the way I kind of try to like to think about it. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I hope I did this tutorial right as well. But I'm pretty sure I did. So thank you guys. And I'll see you later.